like to start uh, by uh, remembering us who are the indigenous peoples. We are the, we have the ancestral roots, we have an ancestral culture and languages. Uh, we are linked to the territories, land and waters. We consider ourselves as the children of Mother Earth. Um, why? Because she is the fundamental base for our cultural development. And of course, as indigenous peoples, we have a close and holistic relationship with Mother Earth because uh, in her is the development of our life and spirituality. We are the guardians of the biodiversity and ecosystems. And for doing this, uh, we have our customary law, which administrate and guide our life. Uh, for instance, we have norms to access to resources. We have times, uh, specific community protocols. Uh, and by using that, of course, we use the resources in a rational way. And before use, uh, using anything, always we ask permission to the spirits of the mother air and we make offerings and prayers. As indigenous peoples during the, the year calendar, we observe uh, the agricultural cycle and the life cycle. Both, both of them are interrelated and have activities and different ceremonies. And we use the circular and cyclical time. Next slide, please. Here you see the picture of the Mother Earth, where as indigenous peoples, we see everything is interconnected, interrelated. And in the, in the next uh, uh, figure, you see the universe of uh, the Andes. Next slide, please. Uh, as I said before, the Mother Earth for us is sacred and alive. And our universe have different worlds, the high universe, the center, and the low. And also we uh, follow the sacred directions, the north, south, east, west, the center, the above, and below. Every plant, every animal, every being in the modern nature has a place, a role, and a spirit. As Dr. Cajete says, all things are related and interconnected everywhere and at all times. We transmit our knowledge orally from one generation to another, and um, uh, always we are defending our life, our collective rights, our genetic resources and traditional knowledge. Every defense we do in the, uh, within the frame of self-determination. Next class, please. Uh, for us indigenous peoples, we have our own epistemologies, which includes entire systems of knowledge and relationships with the cosmos among people and with the environment. Uh, our, our epistemologies refers to, cult to our cultures, times, languages, stories, values, beliefs, spiritualities, and our places in the cosmos. The next, please. Now, um, concerning to this uh, critical and unknown field for indigenous peoples, I would like to say that even the term geoengineering, uh, we don't know. That word doesn't exist in our languages. Um, I know, and may, maybe some other people, few people, indigenous people, might know about this, maybe because uh, we know a little more English, or maybe we have some time to read, no? And from that, we know that the geoengineering is referring to a variety of techniques to solve the climate change. We know that there is a research to create these technologies. And I, I, I was reading about the plantation of plastic in the desert, about the ocean fertilization, about dams construction, and uh, mono plantations. And um, also we know that these are untested technologies. And for and thinking on that, we know that some risk and damages are coming. For instance, for indigenous peoples, already we see the displacement from our lands and territories. And by doing that, we are losing the culture, we are losing the identity, and also we are losing the languages. For, uh, and also there is uh, this kind of experiments 
uh, we already know that they are causing uh, disorder in, in our lands. Uh, for that, we are saying this is a manipulation of the elements of the mother earth with uncertain results. And also we see that it's a, a, a field of business uh, related with Western societies. And of course, um, we keep thinking, and uh, uh, whenever I have to make a presentation, I always go to my community, I always go to my elders, and uh, to my network, and to other indigenous peoples, to find from there um, what might be the impacts. And we said that, of course, the impacts are on the, the three objectives of the CBD. Uh, particularly on the article, uh, the article AJ 10C15 on the IG targets, on the SGDs, and of course on the humankind and Mother Earth. Next, please. So um, we have been uh, uh, thinking uh, how to participate in this thing, and. Our thinking is, um, generally speaking, we are very busy uh, trying to survive. Every day, we are looking for ways to overcome poverty, to overcome the inequality and exclusion. Uh, and by saying that, so we don't have resources or time to make or to participate in this kind of uh, research. Um, so what we do is um, to follow the natural laws, to cohabitate all together in harmony. We follow the ancestral teachings and values like uh, caring, reciprocity, and solidarity. And we use our sciences, art, and technology from ancestral times until now. What we do is to observe deeply and closely the modern nature. And so from, from, uh, from that observation, we know what to do and the reason for doing that. Until now, in this century, we are still calling the wind, we are still calling the rain through the ceremonies and praying. The next, please. Concerning to the um, research, uh, as indigenous uh, peoples, we would like to recommend uh, the, development, the development of an intercultural governance. When we said that, of course, we are asking for consultation with the whole community, with the elders. We are the ones who got the wisdom through the years. Also to observe the free prior and informed consent to respect our right to the veto as the special reporter for indigenous people's human rights and even the Pope said concerning to our issues. Uh, should be respected the biocultural community protocols in this case related to, to research. There are certain things that uh, the researchers, indigenous and non-indigenous need to know about uh, the time of research. We need to have a deep dialogue to, to have an agreement about how we are going to do this, if we are going to participate or not, or, uh, or if we are going on only to be observers or what. The creation of a technical group for monitoring and evaluation. The inclusion of indigenous peoples, men and women, when I'm saying this is um, we need to participate in this kind of meetings and, or in face-to-face -face meetings. But for that, we need um, finan uh, the financial resources. Um, we need also the translation. Uh, I keep thinking about my region, Latin America. We speak our languages and Spanish, the main language. If these kind of discussions are in English or in French or in, in other language, of course, we are not going to be able to participate. Uh, in this kind of governance, also, we are asking for capacity building for indigenous peoples in different levels. 
And of course, uh, for doing that, we need to use culturally appropriate tools, remembering that we are coming from oral tradition uh, peoples. The next, please. For this governance, we need to, uh, to know, to use, and to practice what is said in the national constitution of every, every country, the customary law for indigenous peoples, the international conventions, the international instruments like ILO Convention, the ANDRIC, uh, and also we need to respect and include the traditional knowledge in climate change in other areas also. And uh, as I said before, we need to be included in, uh, in the, the deliberations and decision making, also to include the women participation. We keep thinking that uh, it's the time now to really try to create, design, and develop a sustainable development with uh, the identity to achieve the Ali Causa for all, which means the, the good life for, uh, for all for all and uh, we keep thinking in, in, and we say from our heart that we need to have a healthy mother earth for future generations the next one please so um, in this regard uh, uh, considering the time we have some reflections uh, for instance, indigenous peoples have been making experiments and innovation in a sustainable manner and respectful way from centuries. Uh, so many elders from my region, they, they keep asking me why some human beings are trying to dominate and destroy the mother earth and her ecosystems. The other question is, uh, if the humanity and mother nature are going to survive with the effects of these unknown new technologies. And um, we would like to know also if the geoengineering world is still dominated by men only. If the precautionary approach is in use and also the Aquicon guidelines, no? We know that this is very important as indigenous peoples. And so we would like to conclude by saying that um, would be possible to collaborate uh, with, uh, with you in this field because the indigenous peoples want to work with you as partners in the frame of trust and respect. Thank you very much. <laughs>